All right, hello and welcome back to Ashkabat Cats. Let's play that. This is another game that I decided to just add to this list just so I never forget about it. Because this is Change Airblade. It is a 1v1 versus shoot -em. Now, if I said those words, you would say, hey, Twinkle Star Sprites, right? No. There was actually another game in this unfortunately uncrowded genre. Change Airblade. Now, what's kind of interesting about this game, as directly opposed to Twinkle Star Sprites, is Twinkle Star Sprites very much has a puzzle game in its DNA. Oh cool, it's like a fighting game, it's like choose your character, except this time it kind of matters maybe. Except unlike Twinkle Star Sprites, which has puzzle games in sort of its DNA, uh, this game is just more explicitly, it's like, okay, if we were just going to design a 1v1 shoot 'em up, how would we do it? And uh... Oh, oh wow. So you like legit just shoot them. <laughs> this is great. Uh, okay. And then, oh yeah. <laughs> and they can shoot back, sure, why not? This is, and then, all right. I read online third button lets you use objects and whatever, but that's, that's not necessary. Oh, and now we got the boss. Oh man. This is actually pretty great. So pretty much, it's just you versus the other guy. And I mean, every now and again, enemies show up on screen. Every now and again, you have to, uh... Kill a boss, I guess, which they take part of, but... You shoot him, you, you are actually shooting them. This is this is great. It's like a fighting game, but it's a shoot 'em up. <laughs> no dragon punches, no shoryukens. It's always hard to do those things. But now, it's just shoot 'em up one v one, shoot 'em up action, and things get. Oh, okay. So there's already, yeah, the most dangerous game, huh? Things are always more fun when you're you're hunting them. Oh, oh, I beat them. Okay. So I thought for a second there, if you were on the top of the screen, you'd be essentially helpless. But it's kind of like in Mario Party when it's it's the three versus one, which is to say, <laughs> usually you actually have the advantage. Maybe it's not quite as lopsided as that, but you can certainly put up a pretty good... What is... You can put up a pretty good fight being on the uh, top of the stage. Unfortunately, that means they're probably going to start fighting back soon. And, as it always ends, got a boss. You know, this would be a great game for auto-fire. Oh, okay, so holding down the button does do something. I mean, I guess other uh, companies knew about Cave. But it doesn't really do a whole lot. I guess you kind of, you sort of hold it down and you get a shield. Uh, I'm also not sure if that's limited or not, but whatever. Now, as for the actual uh, bullet patterns themselves, it, it kind of comes from that nascent region before bullet hell was, like, firmly established. But I'm pretty sure Batsagon, Rising, they were around. So you kind of at least had the idea of bullet hell, or at least what would become bullet hell. Which, fair enough, I mean... It seemed like, yeah, if you're gonna make a game like this, Strikers 1945 is probably the game you want to use as a template, not, uh, Bullet Hell Dota. <laughs> well, even Dota Pachi was sort of approachable, but, like, you get sort of the later ones, and it's just absolute madness. Screens filled with bullets. It's like, okay, maybe don't do that for a 1v1 <laughs> fighting shoot 'em up game. <laughs> and the other ridiculous thing is you could, you could probably actually be fighting somebody in the arcades. Oh, thanks, man. I just just use your boss right away. That's I look. I'm at my lowest power right now, but uh, they're just like, hey, let's use a boss. Thanks, pal. I guess that's what makes a stage three and not stage two. Ah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, can you imagine just like playing this game, being right next to the other guy? Now, I mean, you get sort of the same experience with Twinkle Star sprites, but Twinkle Star sprites, it it feels more. I don't know, fair is, is the word I would use. Like, 
the scenery isn't duplicated, but everything else you would care about is duplicated. So enemy patterns, timings of units, whatever, it's all kind of shared. The mechanics you use are shared. It's, it's very fair. Whereas this game is very much sort of a janky kind of... I don't know. It is, it is kind of pleasingly janky. Because again, a lot of times when you're playing one of these shoot 'em up games, like... It's, it's kind of about making janky stuff happen, because it's like, if you think about the raw nature of a shoot 'em up it's like, it's you alone destroying an entire enemy force. And it's like, the only way you could possibly do this is if one of the forces was just blatantly incompetent. And so that's kind of the spirit of shoot 'em ups Like, there's sort of this inherent jankiness, sort of this inherent asymmetry in how things are set up that really just make everything necessary. Oh, come on. Come on, I got him on the ropes. Thankfully, it's not like Twinkle Star Sprites, where uh, whenever you get hurt, then you give the enemy life. You'd say it prolongs the game, but it kind of doesn't, because usually in Twinkle Star Sprites, you get hit once. It's like you hit, you're hit. you going to get hit again. You are going to lose. This game, it seems more like kind of back and forth, kind of more fair. Well, fair is an interesting word to use. But I do like, yeah, the, the inherent asymmetry of it. It just kind of captures the spirit of, like, shoot 'em ups better than, uh, maybe Twinkle Star Sprites does. But again, Twinkle Star Sprites, it's arguably a puzzle game, which kind of makes its existence all the more surprising. And in fact, I'm almost a little bit surprised, like, why aren't there more games like this? I mean, it's not a bad game. Like, in terms of a shoot 'em up, it's fairly competent, like, you've got everything you want, you got nice, big sprites, you got well-detailed backgrounds, you got fluid control, although I, others have laughed at me, and, and fluid animation, so others have laughed at me at occasion when I've called the, uh, animation in a shoot 'em up fluid, because it's like, you just scroll the, you scroll the ship, right? Eh, there's, there's a little bit more to it than that. Bombs are pleasingly powerful in this. How many bombs do I have left? Probably not enough. This is one of those games where I feel like bombs are sort of necessary. Because, I mean, again, the, the enemy's using, like, a boss against me. It's like, well, that's already kind of cheap. I should probably compensate. Although, I do find it very strange that they're not, like, constantly shooting at me. Because when I was on top, it's like, I was I was constantly shooting at them. Whoa. I, did, did I not have an entire bar of life? Okay, maybe maybe things must work drastically different whether you're like a top of the screen, bottom of the screen, because it seems like bottom of the screen is like you get hit once, it's like that's that's almost it. You get hit like two more times, and it's like that's it, that's that's it, pal, you're done. Whereas like top of the screen is kind of like nah, you're, you're basically like a boss, and it's like okay, you get hit a few times, that's fine. You gotta rough up the boss before you beat him. Oh, oh, that's nasty. I also want to if maybe it's like their shots do more damage because like if it's just coming from the other opponent it's like whatever it doesn't even matter but if it comes from the stuff the, the enemy planes then it's like oh you may you, you plane to shoot them up a regular shoot them up that would have just killed you you, sh you should be better oh man the patterns they're not like terrifying but they're noticeable like you do have to be paying attention to this game I mean, that's, that's usually the case in shoot 'em ups, huh? But, like, you play a game like Darius, and it's like it kind of repeats, and after a while, you just kind of stop paying attention. Oh, cool. Oh, maybe that's why the game's called Change Air Blades, because every now and again, you change to the top of the screen. But you play a game like Darius, and it's like you kind of lull yourself into this sort of lull where nothing really matters anymore and you just kind of sit at the bottom of the screen and you just kind of shoot well I guess there is a side scroller so you sit at the side of the screen and just kind of shoot but like you can you can fall asleep with Darius especially Darius Gaiden I mean it's, it's a very long game oh come on man not gonna make this easy on me are you and the worst part is like I can't just go ham on this guy because what if that's where enemy ships are coming Actually, I wonder if that's part of the meta game for this game. Oh, oh man. Because as you see, it's like having a whole life bar of life is not really having a whole life bar full of life. Also, the timer was ticking down, but that's not my main concern. Oh, jeez.
Well, all right, next guy. Can I beat him? <laughs> let's let's find out. Oh, fun fact: your health does not, in fact, regenerate. So I am stuck at just one one life bar. So yeah, I kind of wonder if that's sort of a strategy when you're on top, where you just try to lead them into a bad spot. Because again, there's there's gonna be ships coming from above, and they're gonna kind of help out. And it's like you can you can definitely bait the bottom player into being into a certain spot after a while. And so you just you just get him in the right spot, and bam, you got him. You know, I'm beginning to think that the upper spot is actually the more advantageous spot because that's where the computer starts by default. And I mean, again, if you were making an arcade game, you gotta make it hard so you get the quarters. Uh, I would make it hard for the player. Oh, interesting. So I guess, yeah, if you start from scratch, then, uh, I mean, you get more life, but you maybe get less power-ups, so it's something to weigh on your mind. Not really much of something, but... Jeez Louise, just like a fighting game, it gets, like, immensely hard. I mean, shoot 'em ups also get hard as you go along, but eventually, like... Like, shoot ups usually have an easy part of the stage, and then a hard part of the stage. Whereas, like, fight fighting games just kind of go from, like, pretty intense, like, from, from regular, to, like, just far more intense than you're willing to invest your life into. And, uh... This game has already kind of hit it. Well, let's, let's try playing with a different ship. Maybe the default ship is better. But somehow, I doubt... Whoa! <laughs> I am glad I got to see the name entry screen, though. That was very satisfying. Like, you see literally all of the other names just kind of scroll down, making way for your kingly presence. Yeah, that's right. Respect. You should know to respect the king. Well, uh, this is my usual tactic in fighting games. If you're defeated by somebody, then use it against them. The Stone Golem. Well, I was gonna say, it's a name as dumb as it looks, but it does look pretty dumb. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. All right. Well, let's see if uh, my skill at this game is transferred, and if I actually can do, it, can do better. Probably not. Uh, let's see, what can I do differently? Well, it seems like you taking their shots is totally fine, but if you take, like, the shoot 'em up shots that would be there anyway if this was a regular shoot 'em up game, that is a no-go. Also, using bombs when you don't have bombs. Another pretty solid no-go. Yeah, I will defeat you. There we go. Maybe add the cheese a little, but that's totally fine. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but it does actually prevent you from going up at the upper top half of the screen. I don't know why you would want to, because top half of the screen is death in any shoot 'em up but this game, it... Forty-eight K, Jelda. <laughs> That's just silly. Yeah, the spread shot is not precisely what you. I guess you're not really invincible when you're using the power-ups. So you, you can kind of collect like the big square guys are like power-ups. And uh... oh, I see, see. Yeah, that's true. You don't really get to choose your character after you die. So if you were wondering if this is a shoot 'em up or a fighting game, well, there's one point in favor of shoot 'em up. But uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The big square power ups. Um, those are like special powers you can use against the enemy. But like they're sort of one-time use only. Yeesh. I also wonder too if maybe stage has more effect in this game. <laughs> versus uh, Twinkle Star Sprites, where stage absolutely does not matter. The only thing it affects is how the enemies look like, but that's something that's going to be the same for both of you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, wow. That's... <laughs> I don't know, man. If you ever had like a dark fever dream one day where you're trying to come up with what would be the ultimate hybrid of fighting game and shoot 'em up 
and for some reason you wanted it to be more of a shoot 'em up than a fighting game. That would be this game. That would be almost exactly this game. This game is just absolutely ridiculous. Oh my gosh. You know what? You you earned that victory, even though you kind of really cheated by pulling out two or three bosses. But you know what? Let's just pretend like you were in that fair and square. Game over. I, I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it now. Ooh. That is very satisfying, though. Well, there's not terribly much to say about this game, I guess. It, it gives you a lot to talk about, but I kind of said a lot of it as we went along. Now, I, one standout feature, though, that, like, absolutely gives this game a sense of identity drastically different than any other fighting game. If you get hit by one of the stage hazards, or like one of, if they turn into a boss, you get hit by one of their shots, it's like you just straight up lose an entire health bar of damage. Or health bar of life. And that is just so key in establishing its identity in terms of like, this is a shoot 'em up not a fighting game. And like, I mean, fighting games, it's like there's no attack where it's like, if you get hit by just that one attack, then you instantly lose a third of your health. Now, okay, certainly there are attacks where it's like, okay, you get hit in one of their combos, okay, sure, fine. But like, shoot them up, just one of the core natures of the game is that at any point in time you could die. Like, one hit and that's it, you're out. And that's what they really preserved with this game. Oh, how to play. Well, so far, there's been nothing new. It's just A to shoot, B to bomb. If you get a power-up, you can use C, although power-ups seem a little bit lackluster. Also, they don't really give you invincibility. Although that one did a pleasing amount of damage. And then, yeah, if you get a switch power-up, then you could switch. Uh, it doesn't explain how to um <laughs> actually fight back if you're at the top of the screen, but you can, and it's pretty great. But, uh... I wonder if this is even balanced for 1v1 human-on-human human, human, on human play. Because, on one hand, it seems like being at the top of the screen would be a much bigger advantage. But on the other hand, like, the bottom of the screen can actually kind of win. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. But it does also seem like the difficulty of the stage hazards definitely plays a role. Because, like, it's not really built around skill. Because, like, if the stage hedges are too much, it's like, I don't care who you are, it's like, you, you can't dodge it. It's it's impossible, you're just gonna die. And so, yeah, I mean, you get a hard enough stage and just, there's nothing you can do, it's you're just gonna die. So, yeah, I mean, contrast this with Twinkle Star Sprites, which, it is very much a game of skill. Like, there is skill in the game. You you got it. You need skill to make things happen, and if you have enough skills, and you can really win consistently. This game is kind of it's, it's a bit more janky. It's a bit, a bit more like an actual shoot 'em up. In, in terms of a single player experience, though, this is maybe more satisfying. Like if you just if you just straight up wanted to shoot 'em up, it's like this is gonna deliver that to you. Twinkle Star Sprites, it's, it's half puzzle game, so. It's definitely great, and if you do enjoy shoot 'em ups you should definitely play it at some point in time, but if, if you want, like, a more hardcore shoot 'em up experience, it's got to be this one. But yeah, Change Air Blade. This is a completely obscure game. I just read about it by chance, like, years and years and years ago, maybe even seven years ago. I played it, and I was like, this is fun. This isn't a game I would really want to ever play again, but this is fun. And now I replayed it. Not necessarily because I wanted to play the game. I mean, I, my, I still believe my initial assessment is correct. But this is an interesting piece of history. It's a 1v1 shoot 'em up There is almost literally nothing else like this. And so I figured that, yeah, that's worth archiving. Just like I played Little Magic, just so I would never forget about that again. I played Change Air Blade, just so I never for forget about it. But uh, now that we've seen all it has to offer, on that note, this cat's got a scat. <laughs>